Welcome to this RSET online session. I am Dr. Ringu Jacob from the Department of Basic Sciences and Humanities, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. The topic of my lecture for today is Photonics and this is the second part of my lecture series on this topic. This topic is from second part of module 5 in the engineering physics syllabus for the first year engineering students of the circuit branch as per the KTU syllabus 2019. These are the topics I plan to discuss in this session. These are some of the questions taken from the previous university question paper related to the topic photonics. A solar cell or photovoltaic cell is an electrical device that converts the energy of light directly into electricity by the photovoltaic effect. Photovoltaic effect is the generation of voltage and electric current in a material upon exposure of light. It is a physical and chemical phenomenon. Now, I will go through the history of development of solar cells. The photovoltaic effect was experimentally demonstrated first by the French physicist Edmond Becquerel. In 1839, he built the world's first photovoltaic cell in his father's laboratory. In 1873, Willock B. Smith first described the effect of light on selenium during the passage of an electric current, which he published in 1873 issue in the journal Nature. In 1883, Charles Fritz built the first solid-state photovoltaic cell known as selenium cell by coating the semiconductor selenium with a thin layer of gold to form the junctions. The device was only around 1% efficient. Selenium cell was the world's first rooftop solar array which was installed in 1884 on a New York City rooftop. In 1888, Russian physicist Alexander Stoltov built the first cell based on the outer photoelectric effect discovered by Heinrich Hertz in 1887. He also estimated the response time of the photoelectric current and also discovered the solar cell's sensitivity with time. In 1905, Albert Einstein proposed a new quantum theory of light and explain photoelectric effect. For this, he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. In 1941, Varim Leshkarov discovered PN junctions in solar cells made of cuprous oxide and silver sulphide. In 1946, an American engineer, Russell Shoemaker, who is generally recognized for patenting the modern solar cell. In 1939, he discovered the PN barrier, which later came to be known as the PN junction. All diodes including LED, laser diodes, etc. are product of Russell Hall's work. His work with diodes led him later to develop the first silicon solar cells. In 1954, the first practical photovoltaic cell was publicly demonstrated at Bell Laboratories. The inventors were Calvin, Daryl and Gerald. In 1958, solar cell gained prominence with their incorporation onto the Vanguard 1 satellite as an alternative power source to the primary battery power. Vanguard 1 is an American satellite that was the fourth artificial Earth orbital satellite to be successfully launched following Sputnik 1, Sputnik 2 and Explorer 1 satellites. Vanguard 1 was the first satellite to have solar electric power. From 1960 onwards, solar cells became the main power source for most Earth orbiting satellites and for a number of probes sent into the solar system since they offered the best power to weight ratio. In early 1990s, the technology used for making solar cells for space applications diverged from the silicon technology. And silicon semiconductors were mainly used for making terrestrial solar panels. And for spacecraft applications, gallium arsenide based semiconductor materials were used, which later involved into the modern multi-junction photovoltaic cell that is currently used on the spacecraft. Now we move on to the structure of a solar cell. As you can see in the figure, it consists of a heavily doped PN junction. The top layer, that is the N region, is made very thin to allow solar radiation to reach the PN junction. The PN junction is very narrow because doping level is extremely high. The solar cells have larger surface area to receive a large amount of light. The anode connection is made from the bottom P layer and the cathode connection is made from the top N layer. Also, an anti-reflection coating is made on top layer to prevent light losses due to reflection. You can note down the points on the structure of the solar cell. A 
a single solar cell produces an output voltage of about 0.6 volt. So to get the desired voltage or current, large number of solar cells are connected in series or in parallel as per the requirement. A solar cell is the basic unit. Collections of a single solar cell are termed as solar modules. In a solar module, solar cells are connected either in series or in parallel using wires to get the desired output. Now, when solar modules are connected either in series or in parallel to get the desired output, the collection of the solar module is termed as solar module array. This is shown in the figure. Now we discuss about the working of a solar cell. To explain the working, let me magnify the junction area. In the PN junction, there are no free charge carriers. But when the sunlight falls at the junction, photons will pass through the n-type region and reaches the junction. These photons give up their energy to the electron hole pairs. By absorbing this energy, the electron hole pairs get separated. The separated electrons are attracted towards the n region by the positive holes at the junction and the separated holes are attracted towards the p region by the negative electrons at the junction. So a potential is thus formed. So when a load is connected across the terminals of the solar cell, these charges flow through the load and thus produces a current. This is how a solar cell works. Now we study the characteristics of a solar cell in terms of voltage and current. To understand the current and voltage relation in the solar cell, we make use of the IV graph. As we know, the purpose of a solar cell is to convert the incident light energy into electrical energy. So, before we use the solar cell for any practical application, we have to find the conditions technically called as solar cell parameters so that we can ensure that the solar cell delivers maximum power it generates to the load or resistance. Here load means any devices that is connected to the solar cell. It can be a mobile phone or a bulb or any electrical device. Now I will explain how to obtain the current and voltage for studying the characteristics of a solar cell. To make the observation, first we make the connections. For that, take a solar cell and a variable resistor or load and connect them in series. Now include an ammeter in series to measure the current in the circuit. Then include a voltmeter in parallel to the variable resistor. This is the circuit diagram for the analysis. Now by varying the resistance of the variable resistor, we note down the corresponding current and voltage from the ammeter and voltmeter respectively. This is tabulated in a column as shown here. For a simple example, I take the values of resistance to be as 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 up to 1 ohm and at last an infinite resistance. And suppose we take the corresponding observation for voltage and current. Here, varying the resistance means connecting different devices across the solar cell. Now, when we plot the observed data on a graph, with voltage along x-axis and current along y-axis, we get a curve as shown in the figure. Now I will explain why we take the resistance to be as zero and infinity. And these two values gives the extreme points on the graph, which is shown in red circles. To understand this, let us take the case r equal to zero. Now r equal to zero means there is no resistance for the variable resistor. So it is equal to replacing the variable resistor with a wire of zero resistance as shown in the figure. This condition is called short circuiting. So if we assume the wires are having zero electrical resistance, maximum current flows from the solar cell and back to the solar cell through the short circuit path. And this current is called as short circuit current, which is denoted by ISE. So we take this short circuit current ISE in the tabular column and there is no current passing through the voltmeter. So the voltmeter reads zero volt. So in the tabular column, the value of voltage for zero resistance is zero. Similarly, we take the other extreme value of resistance, that is infinite resistance. So when you connect an infinite resistance in place of variable resistor, it will block the entire current in the circuit. So the current in the ammeter will be zero. But in real case, as there is no resistance called as infinite resistance, we make the same situation that an infinite resistance makes if it is placed in the circuit, that is to make the current in the circuit zero. We achieve this by removing the variable resistor as shown in the figure. So it is equivalent to make the circuit open as there is no load. Remember the voltmeter and ammeter is only to make the measurement. Now the ammeter shows zero current. This value of current is tabulated. Now the voltmeter shows maximum voltage. 
this voltage is the maximum voltage produced by the solar cell when there is no load or the circuit is open. This voltage is called as open circuit voltage and is denoted by VOC. OC denotes open circuit. This is also tabulated. The corresponding values of voltage and current for other values of resistances are also tabulated. Now we will look back into the IV graph we plotted earlier. So from the tabular column, we take the voltage and current readings for zero resistance. So we get the first point denoted in red circle. Similarly, when we take the voltage and current readings for infinite resistance, we get the last point on the graph. Now to find the maximum power delivering condition, we add one more column to the tabular column. In the power column, we can see for resistance values 0 and infinity, the power delivered to the load is 0. For other values of resistances, there is some value of power delivered. From this tabular column, we find the maximum power delivered. Suppose it is for 0.6 ohm, then the voltage and current values for this maximum power is denoted by Vmax and Imax. The maximum power is denoted by Pmax. This is shown in the IV graph. We can also find the maximum power point by plotting the power graph on the IV graph as shown here. So you can see in the figure, the blue line indicates the power delivered to the load when you change the value of resistance or load. The power delivered to the load gradually increases from zero where the resistance connected is zero and then reaches a maximum where it exactly coincides with the maximum power point on the IV graph. Then it decreases and reaches the voltage axis when the resistance connected is infinity. These are the definitions for the different parameters we discussed. Now I will explain about a parameter which determines the maximum power from a solar cell, which is in conjunction with open circuit voltage and short circuit current. This parameter is called as fill factor, which is more commonly known by its abbreviation FF. This measure is calculated by comparing the maximum power which is denoted by Pmax it delivers in real situation to the theoretical or ideal power which is denoted by Pt that is fill factor is the ratio between Pmax and Pt. Now the term in the numerator of the equation that is Pmax is the product of maximum current Imax and maximum voltage Vmax which are the coordinates of the maximum power point on the IV curve. This is the real maximum power the solar cell delivers to the load. Now let us see the denominator term that is Pt. It is called as theoretical or ideal power as it is not possible to attain. On the IV graph shown here, when we compare Vmax and VOC, VOC is greater than Vmax. So normally we expect if we can achieve VOC, we get more power as output from the solar cell compared to the power delivered from the solar cell at a voltage Vmax. But from the graph, it is clear that the current corresponding to the VOC is zero. So power delivered is zero. So no power is delivered. Similarly, when we compare Imax and short circuit current ISC, ISC is greater than Imax. So we expect to get more power at ISC compared to the power obtained from the solar cell at Imax. But since the X coordinate of the point corresponding to ISC, that is the voltage is zero. So the power which is the product of ISC and V is zero. So no power will be delivered to the load. We assume that if we can get ISC and VOC at the same time without being zero, then the power is written as the product of ISC and VOC. This is the theoretical power or ideal power, which is the denominator term in the equation. Here the denominator term will be always greater than the numerator. So the ratio will be always less than unity. Normally for the solar cell, the fill factor value ranges from 0.5 to 0.82. Now we try to understand why this ratio is named as fill factor. So first we look the numerator term of the equation. In the numerator, it is the product of Imax and Vmax. So on the graph, Imax and Vmax are the two lengths shown in blue color. Their product means it is the area of the rectangle shown here. Now we take the denominator term of the equation. In the denominator, it is the product of ISC and VOC. So on the graph, ISC and VOC are the two lengths shown in green color. 
Their product means it is the area of the rectangle shown here. So, fill factor is the ratio of the area of the rectangles produced by the real power and theoretical power. In other words, fill factor gives information about how much area is being filled in real situation compared to the theoretical or ideal area on the IV curve. Now, we move on to the topic efficiency of a solar cell. It is defined as the ratio of electrical power output denoted by P out compared to the amount of solar power input denoted by P in onto the solar cell or photovoltaic cell. So, the equation for efficiency is given by eta equal to P out divided by P in. We are interested in getting maximum efficiency, which is possible only when the output power from the solar cell is maximum. So, eta maximum equal to P max divided by P in. Now, to find P max, we make use of fill factor equation, which is given by fill factor equal to P max divided by P t. Now, rearranging in terms of P max, we get P max as the product of fill factor, IOC and VOC. Using this value of P max in the equation for eta maximum, we get eta maximum equal to fill factor into IOC into VOC all divided by P in. Now, we have to find the denominator term input power denoted by P in. It is the amount of light energy falling in unit time. So, it can be expressed as a product of input light irradiance denoted by capital E and the surface area of the solar cell on which this energy falls and it is denoted by capital A. Light irradiance is a flux of radiant energy per unit area that is normal to the direction of flow of the radiant energy through a medium. This is the end of part 2. Thank you for watching this RSET online video session on the topic photonics. For more lectures, please visit the link shown below.